what I'm about to show you may finally convince you that property investment may be bad. Just maybe. I've actually data on rental yield. I've actually data on property trends that may impact the future price of Singapore residential property, which I'll explain towards the end of this video. But first, let's start with this headline that HDB and condo rents have softened in May as leasing volumes dip. As mentioned, rents for HDB flats have fallen for the first time since January as renters look towards condo, simply because the price gap is narrowing. Then also, market watchers attribute the fall in rents to the decrease in demand in both markets, mainly due to a weak job market. Let's firstly talk about HDB rent. If you see the HDB rental index, you would realize that yes, it is true that this is the first dip since January, but it's also not the first dip ever. The rental index seems very resilient, but it's pretty obvious that it's peaking, correct? This is still not too bad because what I'm about to show you next is the condo rental index. If you see the chart over here, it has been a gradual decline for the last one year. Month on month drop. Will this bear market end? I think unfortunately it still has some legs to go because if you see in terms of projected supply, there is still quite a lot coming. For 2024, another 10,500 units. Next year seems to be a bit better, but it's still supply that's going to add to competition. To show you how bad things can be if you are renting out your condo and trying to earn rental income, let me use actual numbers from a particular project and I've actually picked Normanton Park. If you have just bought a unit there, I'm sorry, you may not like what I say, and hopefully I'm wrong and you're right, but these are really actual numbers. Let's dive on first to one bedroom units in Normanton Park. You would see that transaction prices now hover between $1.03 to $1.17 million. Rental for one bedroom units there hover between $3,001 to $3,500 per month. For this calculation, Let's use the second worst scenario in the purchasing price as the rental collected. Just in case the worst is an outlier. Somebody who hasn't done homework properly and overpaid or have just settled for lousy rent. So the figures I've chosen is for someone who may have bought at $1.12 million and rented out at $3,200. $3,200 again is gross rental. As always, when you own a condo, you have conservancy charges, and if it's rented out, it's a non-owner occupied property tax rate, which is higher. So I'll just give a net rent income of $3,000, which again, I feel is pretty optimistic already. As always, in terms of calculation, one month of rent needs to be paid to Asian, right? Because there's a lot of competition to buy tenants. So we use 11 months of $3,000 passive income to get a total annual property net income of $33,000. If you receive that, how much in terms of rental you is it? The answer depends on your purchasing price. And for this example, we'll use 1.12 million, which means 33,000 over 1.12 million gives only 2.95% rental you. 2.95% might as well get guaranteed you from Singapore Savings Bonds, correct? And I even added in income tax impact because if you rent, you get rental income that adds on to your income tax. If you're a high income earner, that could easily be the 20% income tax bracket. I even even added in periods of vacancy. I even added in wear and tear for replacement costs because the tap could be spoiled, the door handle could be damaged, etc. and etc. So some people might feel, never mind, I buy a shoebox unit. Even if rental sucks, I'm looking for appreciation, correct? Now, I think on the ground, I'm hearing quite a bit that shoebox units, which is the studio and one bader, the tide has really turned because the people who want it as a home are just a very small niche. Most people want a decent size as home so that family members can stay comfortably, correct? That's why if you see for Normanton Park, the one bedroom per square foot is actually lower than the three bedroom per square foot. Very surprising, correct? Because the logic suggests that as the condom gets bigger, the per square foot should drop. But as you can see, the average for three bedroom is even higher than one bedroom. Maybe this is just for Normanton Park, or maybe it's just that data points are too few. I leave it up to your interpretation, and I actually like to answer for you next 
the question if you invest into a three bedroom instead of a one bedroom. Before you get there, invite you to press on the subscribe button so that we can reach 100,000 subscribers together and impact more Singaporeans to make proper and prudent financial choices. Thank you very much and let me show you data next on three bedroom units in Normandon Park. Let's again use the second worst case scenario for purchasing price for rent as well as the second worst purchasing price. Just in case again, there are some outliers. That figure would be 5,000 gross rent and $2.8 million. Let's firstly work on the 5,000 gross rent. For a bigger unit, the conservancy charges will be bigger. The property tax will be bigger. That's why it's actually fair to assume that the net rental collected is actually only $4,500. Times 11 months, that is $49,500 for an entire year of rent. If we were to use $49,500 over $2.8 million as the purchasing price, what would the rental yield be? The figure, a meagre 1.77%. Could there be something wrong or not? Maybe for three bedroom units, there are many sizes. So can we use instead the latest transaction for three bedroom there, which is 2.32 million? Yes, it does help the rental yield, but with that figure, what I get is only 2.13%. That is even worse than the one bedroom unit, correct? And again, tenants don't really care too much about size. Neither do they care too much about the floor. You can buy a top floor, but they won't pay you 10%, 20% more in rental rate. So there is a chance that what I'm suggesting, that the rental you is quite pathetic, has valid points. If you are owning it as an investor, at 2.32 million, 75% loan to valuation, that means you have to take a loan of 1.74 million. At current interest cost, with a loan tenure of 25 years and getting the best fixed rate right now at 2.9%, you would realize that your monthly mortgage is 8,161. Wow, this is a big figure as compared to the net rental income of 4,500, correct? Which means easily you could be bleeding some cash flow. But the point is this, what if you didn't even get 2.9%? What if you locked in at a higher mortgage rate? That negative cash flow could even be more pronounced. If you're in this situation, I should provide full financial advisory work on retirement planning, of which your investment assets actually play an important part. If you are keen to hire me on a one-to-one -one basis, look for links below. And I also like to invite you to check out Smart Refi, which can help you get the best mortgage rates and help you suggest when you should exactly do refinancing. If you lock yourself into a mortgage for a while, you might be missing out on better deals that can unlock savings from your mortgage. And that's actually where Property Guru Finance comes in. Property Guru Finance simplifies every step of home loan journey, including refinancing. The innovative Smart Refi feature makes the refinancing process effortless. With just a few clicks under two minutes, Smart Refi can check your refinancing eligibility and show you potential savings on refinancing. Answer some quick questions about your current mortgage and within minutes, Smart Refi will generate you a personalized refinancing proposal. This proposal tells you several things. Should you refinance now or later? How much could you save by refinancing? And the best refinancing home loans based on your unique needs. Now, if you decide to move forward, Property Guru Finance isn't just about online tools. It has a team of dedicated mortgage experts ready to handle your end-to-end -end mortgage loan refinancing application. Simply click Customize and book a call with one of their mortgage experts. Property Guru Finance has access to the best refinancing rates across all major banks in Singapore, its in-house mortgage experts help you compare rates and craft out a refinancing plan that's tailored to your specific financial goals. All these services and features are free of charge and without any hidden fees. So if you're curious about refinancing, head over to Property Guru Finance, try out Smart Refi, check them out with my links below. As I've presented so far, rental rates seem to be suggesting property investments are terrible, correct? So why are we still all so keen to buy property? Could it be we are just looking for appreciation? The first pushback to this idea typically is, is that the demand is going to be strong. There is limited supply. Now for demand, we have to define exactly what demand. Is it firstly the investment demand? For investment demand, the foreigner demand, you can forget about it already. Firstly, they are only keen in luxury properties generally. 
And right now, there's an ABSD of 60%. From why here on the ground, for this year, there could be only one transaction of this so far. Then for investment demand, locals doing one property in each name, I fear that many are still looking at old data, where there's still big windfalls when a project goes TOP. That could still be why the investment demand is strong. Then what about for homestay demand? Maybe one argument is families are getting smaller. A 30-year-old child in the family may just buy a condo on his or her own with the support of parents. Nowadays, there are a lot of cash-rich parents out there. I do believe in that. But we all know that our local population is actually shrinking. The birth rate is so low. And when we see Singapore's population growth, we kind of know that is due to migrants. I have actually extracted our data to show you that in the last five years, the population growth rate has really slowed. 2020 seems to be a small bump up because of COVID. Singapore was a good place to be in. Many people came over. But as we can see, 2023, 2024, the population growth rate has trended again downwards. Latest whispers on the ground. Bankers are now going back to Hong Kong. The Singapore attraction, as this title suggests, has died down. Simply because the gap in terms of Hong Kong's cost of living in Singapore has narrowed to such a point where it no longer is attractive. And with China reopening up, Hong Kong may be a place that rebounds. Let me know in the comment section whether you agree or not. And since you start right to the end, here are my conclusions. In this chart over here, I've mapped out for you on top, the rental index, and at the bottom, the price index. It is quite clear that before 2013, the correlation between rental rate and price appreciation is very strong. But there seems to be some divergence ever since 2013. That could be due to artificially low interest rates. The blue line suggests that property prices stayed strong while rental rates declined for the next few years. And when property prices picked up in 2017, rental rates were still pretty flat. In the last six months, rental rates have dropped, but property prices have continued to stay strong. I read this entire divergence and conclude that there's a possibility that the private residential market is arguably overpriced. The yield does not suggest long-term investments. For short-term investors, they are aiming for capital gains. And there's every likelihood that it will turn at some point of time. I agree with this conclusion that Singapore home prices could remain flattish and rental rates may continue to drop in 2024 by another 5 to 10%. Maybe as more bearish reports like this hit, 2025 might be a challenging year for residential property markets. I'm still bearish on Singapore residential markets. I may have caught it too early as what I've suggested in this very viral video. Be prudent on your property purchase and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye.